Good morning, morning. everyone. We're finishing up our week on Psalm 119, and uh, we've been taking little sections of it. As we said, we, we tried to read through this with our kids a few years ago, did a section every morning. Um, it's the longest psalm in the Bible and the longest chapter in the Bible. Um, we've been looking at different aspects from uh, freedom. What else have we looked at this week? Uh, love, loving God's word, mm. um, freedom. And uh, it being our refuge. Yeah, our hope in God's word. So we're going to read uh, to you a section this morning, uh, verse 89 to 96. Psalm 119, verses 89 to 96. Um, your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You established the earth and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. I have sought out your precepts. The wicked are waiting to destroy me, but I will ponder your statutes. To all perfection I see a limit, but your commands are boundless. We'll read, um, we'll read the message version. Uh, Jenny, do you want to just read that? What you say goes, God, and stays as permanent as the heavens. Your truth never goes out of fashion. It's as up to date as the earth when the sun comes up. Your word and truth are dependable as ever. That's what you ordered. You set the earth going. If your revelation hadn't delighted me so, I would have given up when the hard times came. But I'll never forget the advice you gave me. You saved my life with these wise words. Save me. I'm all yours. I look high and low for your words of wisdom. The wicked lie in ambush to destroy me. But I'm only concerned with your plans for me. I see the limits to everything human, but the horizons can't contain your commands. I see the limits to everything human, but uh, your horizons, the horizons can't contain your commands. Um, elsewhere, uh, we read in the Bible, um, where Jesus says in Matthew's Gospel, heaven, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Um, they will perish psalm 102 but you remain they will all wear out like a garment like clothing you will change them and they will be passed on um isaiah my word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty but it will accomplish what i please and it will prosper where i sent it matthew 5 18 for i tell you truly until heaven and earth pass away not a single jot not a stroke of a pen will disappear from the law until everything is accomplished so Jesus said, this will all pass away. Everything you see, heaven and earth, will pass away. Or as we read here, there are limits. There are limits to all perfection. <coughs> to everything human, I see a limit. But your commands are boundless. All good things come to an end, don't they? Everything is limited. And good seasons or, or um, you know, relationships, family life, um, seasons of our life, Everything around us, really, everything will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my words, Jesus said, will never pass away. They endure forever. There is a limit. There's a boundary to all of these things in our lives. Um, things pass. There are seasons. Things come to an end. And as human beings, we experience loss and we experience grief and we ex experience giving up things and things that we've cherished, things that are meaningful to us, things that we value, things that we love, um, people that we love, um, and all of it is limited. Um, and even in, in, in life and ministry, there are, there are people that I've looked to, mentors or, or, or authors or, or pastors, and I see them passing on, I, I see them leaving ministry, I see them uh, dying, I see them, you know, they're no longer with us. And I, I look back at seasons of our life and ministry that I know that are now past and we've moved on to, to, to new seasons. And, but what this Psalm says really is, is that God and his word are eternal. They never pass away. They move from generation to generation, down the generations. There's a, 
There's an absolute solidity to God's word. There's an eternity to it. Uh, it will never pass away. Not one jot, not one tittle, <laughs> not, not a dot on an I or a cross on a T. It will, it will all remain. And this sense of, of it being like seed that is sown and the rain that comes down, it achieves that for which it's sent. There's eternity in the word of God, which is why it's so important that we preach it, that we know it, that we love it, that we imbibe it, that we meditate on it, that we memorize it, that we live according to it, which is what Psalm 119 is all about. It's like honey to our lips. It's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a refuge for us. It's our hope. It's our life. It's our joy. It's our peace. And, um, and all these different words that the psalmist uses, your precepts, your statutes, your laws, your, your, your word, your truth, um, and so as, as we read on this Friday, as we come like to the end of our meditations on Psalm 119, and we're coming to the, the end of our meditations, these morning devotionals, we'll do another week, but it's just to impress on each one of us the, the importance of the Word of God and get, getting it into our lives and living according to it. That will bring us freedom, it will bring us joy. And as we find sometimes things slipping away from us or we, we find ourselves grieving loss or fearing loss, we can know that we can come back to God's word and it is eternal. It is true. It will be there tomorrow and next week and next month. It will be there for our children and our children's children. It will be there even as the heavens and earth pass away and Jesus returns the word of God will, will withstand all of these things and all of these changes. So to all perfection, I see a limit. <laughs> things that seem perfect for now, there's a limit. It's, it's got a limited shelf life. Everything degrades, but, but your commands are boundless. Your word, O oh Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth and it endures. So we can have great comfort in that. You know, in the shifting sands of life, we can have great comfort in the word of God and in the words of God to us. And uh, let's take time to try and listen to those words and write them down and bleed them into our prayer life. And let's hear what God says and let's stand on that, on on. Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. The parable that Jesus told of the two houses that were built, it looked the same, they had the same appearance, but one was built on rock and the other was built on sand. And Jesus said, the one that takes my word, obeys it, does what it says, is like the one who builds their house on the rock. <laughs> when the storms come and the floods rise, it will stand. Your sisters just had floods. Yeah, in Germany, the um, river broke its banks and um, the sewage system has collapsed. And she says cars are overturned in the streets and how uh, buildings have collapsed and people are missing. So it's just crazy times in mm. Germany as well. But um, yeah, even things we depend on, just like a building, a, a, a house, you know, um, and our, our sometimes we depend on ourselves, don't we? We say, I'll never do this, or I'll never do that, or I'll always be like this. But we change as well, don't we? We get affected by the circumstances in life and, um, yeah, and aren't as reliable, perhaps, as we think, you know. Um, so it's, it's good to know that in all of that, there's the firm rock of God's word that is always constant, always consistent, always enduring. And... Um, you know, last forever. It's it's been the bestseller, hasn't it? For yeah. um for like forever. They don't even count it anymore on the bestseller list because it's it's just a given that it's it's the bestseller. Um so it you know the word of God is what we can hold on to in the storms of life, in the floods, in in the fire, and um just trust it, trust in that. I'll read it again in the New Living Translation, just let the word speak for itself, and then maybe Jenny will pray for us. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. Your faithfulness extends to every generation, as enduring as the earth you created. 
Your regulations remain true to this day, for everything serves your plans. If your instructions hadn't sustained me with joy, I would have died in my misery. I will never forget your commandments, for by them you give me life. I am yours, rescue me. For I have worked hard at obeying your commandments. Though the wicked hide along the way to kill me, I will quietly keep my mind on your laws. Even perfection has its limits, but your commands have no limit. Father, we thank you that for this gift of your word that we can rely on, that endures throughout the ages, throughout the changes, throughout the cultural shifts, throughout natural catastrophes. We thank you that your word is unchanging, revealing your true character. And we want to rely on you. We want to rely on your word. And I pray that you'd help us to get it embedded into our hearts even deeper. And I pray again for a deep hunger for all of us, for your word of God, that we'd want to read it, we'd want to memorize it, we'd want to know it. Commit your people to you. We pray for your blessing on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday, our final week of devotion. So we'll see you then. God bless you.